So a couple of weeks ago, I shot in a match that was literally, I haven't seen dust like this since Oklahoma 2016. It was insane. Now, if you listen to this, action still sounds incredibly smooth. Now, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of tips as to how I restore this. It's gonna be very difficult for you to see the state of this rifle. I did take some cool pictures the other day. You would have seen it on the thumbnail. That's actually what this rifle looks like. And I'll give you guys some close-ups of that now. In fact, it's been in and out of the safe a few times. And just today, I noticed all the sand lying in this objective lens. And there was also a piece of grass still caught in here, which was absolutely nuts. Now, I'm gonna get this rifle clean and ready to go. The barrel won't be clean. There's about 40 rounds down this barrel since it's last cleaning. But on a surface level and lubing my bolt and cleaning all of those things, that's what we're gonna be doing. Also, I was shooting the 28 Sherman Magnum behind me this past weekend and a couple of stages we were shooting, we were shooting out to 1,300 yards in the rain. So that rifle definitely needs a bit of cleaning and some TLC too. So that's what we're gonna be doing in today's video. Let's go. Okay, let's get that out the way. Now, first things first, I like to wear gloves when I'm working on my rifles for a couple of reasons. We may be using some chemicals in this process, probably not because we won't be cleaning the barrel of that. Now, YouTube person approving this video for monetization, we won't be modifying the firearms or anything like that. We'll be showing a demonstration as to how to take care of your equipment. So don't worry, I know you're gonna give this video a prostate exam, but uh, everything's on the up and up. Now, I like to wear gloves. Don't like the chemicals on my hands. And also, if there's oils and stuff on my hands, in the next room, I've got a marine fish tank with a whole reef and live corals and everything. And if there's dodgy stuff in your hands and I forget about it, and I put my hand into that tank, it's not gonna end great for Nemo and friends. So, without further ado, I'm gonna pop this out of the tripod and then we'll get cracking. So I think what we have to do is, obviously the rifles are safe, both of them mag out, bolts open. I'm gonna just wipe everything down first of all. I'm gonna start with my bolt and I'm actually gonna break this barreled action out of this h and 26 chassis because inside here there's gonna be a whole bunch of dust and stuff and I'm gonna try and give you guys close-ups as we go throughout this process. So first things first, our silencer is gonna come off the front here. Now fun fact, if you're watching in America and you didn't know this, this is gonna burn your ass big time. In South Africa, silencers are not regulated at all. We can just walk in, buy these like buying a carton of milk, same story. Um, however, obviously when we have to purchase firearms, it's a bit of a different story there. Our process is, I guess, similar to what you guys would go through um, when it comes to actually licensing a suppressor. So our bolt is out. Somebody also asked me the other day on Instagram or was it in the comments on YouTube, if there's any play in the folder of the h 26. The definitive answer to that is no. I mean, even if I wiggle it like this, there is no play and this folds obviously all the way around. It is the double action and it locks there. Again, no play there. I have to push that down to get it back. Really awesome folder. Some of the folders I've had in the past on ESSs and stuff have been very tight and the tolerances have to be very tight because otherwise you do end up with a sloppy thing when it's folded or even if you're using it, the last thing you want is any sort of wobble there. So. Rest assured, you're good to go there. Now, I'm also gonna undo the action screws. I tried being creative with like some tape to help me on the barricades and the obstacles and the stuff we were shooting. Oh, my shattered nerves, this makes my point for me. Look at the grass and the stuff coming out of this. <laughs> this flippin' piece of, you know, like a hay bale or something just came out the bottom of the rifle. That's hilarious. So I tried putting like a non-slip type of tape on this. It helped absolutely nothing. That video will air on the channel soon. It is a bit of a pain in the butt to edit, but I need to get this rifle ready because we're heading into hunting season. And I'm taking this rifle with, but I'm not planning on using a rifle, if you know what I mean. So if you want to see that video, my first bow hunt ever, make sure you're subscribed. That is happening this coming week. My brother and I are leaving in two days. Super, super pumped and very nervous. So I've loosened all my bolts. It's obviously always extremely important that when you're working with, you know, precision equipment that you're using a torque wrench. And this is exactly why we've cleaned the sucker. We can see obviously it got a little bit of wet. So there's a little bit of surface rust over there. Plenty of gunk underneath this action. 
What I'm actually gonna do, I'm also gonna pop off my optic. I'm not gonna take it out the rings. I'm just gonna pop those two bolts off because then I should be able to return to zero with you know a click or two. Blow out my optic. <laughs> Should have thought that through. <laughs> and then blow out my optic. When you're cleaning an objective lens or even this ocular lens on this side, there's so much dust and stuff on there. You want to be very careful. So I always try and blow off as much as I can before I go in there with any form of lens cleansing system. That is very important. Because if you start just, you know, like you clean your sunglasses just with your t-shirt, you're potentially going to scratch your optic. And you might not see that scratch. You would be surprised how badly you can scratch an optic and still have a very good sight picture. If I have time, I'll try and record footage through a scope and overlay it at the moment and show you guys what, this, what it looks like through the scope and then show you what it looks like if you actually look at the scope. It's actually pretty remarkable. But I want to avoid doing that, you know, if I'm ever selling an optic or something down the line, if a guy looks and sees, hey, there's a scratch on there, it's never nice doing that. So I'm going to pop those two loose. What I wanted to say is when you're using um, your same like fix it sticks or your torque wrench, if you just have a sort of normal torque wrench, don't use your torque wrench to loosen stuff, rather use your T-handle instead and that is just going to give you more serviceability and life out of your torque wrench set by not loosening things with your torque wrench. Right, our optic is off and we have our barrel action. I'm not gonna bother too much. In fact, this trigger is actually pretty easy to take off this trigger tech. I'm actually gonna undo those. Just make sure everything is as clean as possible. You wanna avoid oils and solvents and things going into your trigger because, in fact, you wanna avoid oils and things like that in general if it's gonna be a pretty wet or dusty day out. And chances are, if you're shooting precision rifle, you're definitely gonna shoot in the dust at some point. So we wanna have as little as possible oil on anything, because the only thing that oil is gonna do from you, while it's gonna loop while you dry fire at home and your action's gonna feel like a bat machine action, it's gonna feel super smooth and super good, as soon as you start shooting in real world conditions, any sort of particles in the air is gonna start, it's gonna become a magnet, and it's gonna just suck onto everything and it's gonna gunk up everything. So while we are gonna use some oils and things to basically coat the metal, we're actually gonna end up removing almost all the oil once we're done with this process. So first things first, I'm gonna just use some good old fashioned white gold to wipe everything down. If you really wanted to, you could use a brush or something like that to just brush off you know, any major stuff, but all of that stuff is gonna just end up on your floor. So I find TP works really good. Sometimes the brush can be handy for getting into spots like in this you know, scope base at the top here where I can't necessarily get into all the nooks and crannies, even the sort of area there by the trigger. So the brush can be very handy too. And if it's pink, it makes your cleaning more efficient. Don't ask me why, this is just a fact. Okay, so TP, I'm gonna wipe everything down, but first let me pull this trigger. Now it always amazes me, given how far we've disassembled this rifle, trigger off, barrel action off, telescope off, telescope, big word out of the chassis, the whole works muzzle device off. I'll put everything back together and we'll be within a centimeter of shooting a bullseye, very likely. And that is all as a result of setting everything up as it should be the first time, torquing it, making sure you're applying the right pressure to the right part and into the right direction when you're actually tightening things down. It just gives you that incredible repeatability down the line. And as a result of that, I'm not too stressed about disassembling my whole rifle because I know is gonna be pretty much there or thereabouts when I put it all back together. So, I'm not gonna bore you guys with the whole freaking thing. By the way, let me know. I'm running a lapel mic, much requested. Also, I've got my big mic up here. So, I won't tell you which one is which, but there'll be an A or a B in this video at some point. Let me know which order you prefer, please. So, I'm making some changes, trying some things. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. So we're gonna wipe everything down. Now, as I said, this pipe has recently been cleaned, so we're not gonna be doing that. We are gonna be cleaning everything and then putting some oils and stuff on there, and I'm gonna show you guys how much of what I apply where, also how we're gonna go about lubing our bolt. Very important when you're swinging your barrel action around like this, be very careful of knocking your crown on something, like something on there or whatever the case may be because that'll obviously be a bad day for us. We want to protect this like gold. So yeah, let's wipe everything down. Out of this whole lot, our bolt is probably going to be one of the filthiest things. Now, as I said, 
we don't necessarily want to be going out into a match or in a hunting environment with a whole oiled up lubed bolt. So if you do do that, it's going to be just a trap for guk, okay, and ik. This is what that looks like. Not very freaking good. Let me give you a close up of that. As my three-year-old would say, diseases. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to clean and wipe all of that down. Also go into the bolt face. And we don't have to spend an incredible amount of time on this. This is The only reason this is going to take me long is because I have to video this for you guys and set up some different angles and stuff. But that is pretty much it. I'm going to make sure in the back here I get all the little nooks and crannies around the corners. And we're going to pop that off to the side. What you can also do is wipe out the inside of your chassis, the outside of your chassis. Generally what I do with something like that, I wouldn't waste the toilet paper on that because there's no oils and things on this, so I'm just going to use like a microfiber cloth and that's going to give me a fantastic result too. And I generally have one of these handy on my workbench. So just wiping that down is going to clean that out just like that. And now this piece is ready to go. Now, unfortunately, on the bottom of this, there's some residue now from that non-slip surface tape that I put on here. So I'm going to use some 99. 9% isopropic alcohol. Now I found this stuff is really good for cleaning guns and it doesn't, it's not abrasive to surfaces and stuff like that. You know, I found sometimes stuff like acetone can be a little bit too hectic for some of the materials and the surfaces we're working and you want to avoid that around your rifle, specifically your optic. It might eat off your lens coating or stuff like that. So I'm just going to use this to get all of that glue off. And then we're gonna, once we've got the majority of the glue off, we're just gonna wipe this again with the microfiber cloth. Also add some alcohol to that, just to help that lube come off. And this 99.9% .9 alcohol is so handy just around the house. It's very cool to have it in your reloading room too. I use it on a ton of stuff. It's super cheap. I buy them in like five liter buckets on the interwebs and I just have them delivered to my house. Do not drink it if you're, next time you're in lockdown and they stop selling booze. So this stuff <laughs> is pretty rough. Okay, so now we got all the residue off there. That's very good. The reason I want to make double sure to get all the residue off is much like the oils and the stuff that you could potentially leave on your action, any residue will obviously just attract dirt and those kind of things. So I'm going to do the same thing with this sort of chassis body here. <sighs> Goodness gracious, there's a lot of sand and stuff in this sort of receiver section so i'm just gonna this is a prime opportunity for afrikaans word of the day and that's gonna be quas okay which is a brush and especially here this back section that's gonna get a lot of that stuff out of there if i really wanted to i could pull my little cheek riser here and get that too but that's the majority of stuff let's get in the mag release here just make sure all of these areas are in fact clean so now our chassis is ready to go as you guys can see this is a relatively easy process and now we're going to do the same thing with our barrel. I'm going to just use one of our other uh, pieces of TP. Just make sure we get any stuff off there. Make sure our threads are nice and clean. So apply some pressure. Something the rubber gloves also help a little bit with is just increasing your grip, especially these ones. These are the expensive ones you get. I'm going to wipe inside of my action. Just get the most of the dirt and the stuff out of here that we can and then switch to a new piece of toilet paper just to get all the last little bits out. Now why in the beginning of the video did I say that it reminded me of Oklahoma 2016? In 2016 I shot the Precision Rifle Series finale in Oklahoma and that's we had this moon dust stuff and the guys that have ever shot a match in Oklahoma they know what I'm talking about. The moon dust is insane. Paired with the Oklahoma winds our rifles was horrific and my rifle had to stay like that all the way back to South Africa and that was something that was a little bit painful with even this. I knew I wanted to video it for you guys so I left it like this for two weeks, okay, well a week and a half, which is way too long for my OCD, it was massively bothering me and uh, yeah, everything looks hunky-dory in there, I can see you guys all the way down there. So this is pretty much clean. I'm just going to use some special tools like these two guys. I'm going to run this one down into my chamber. Just make sure there's no sand or debris in there. And then I'm going to use this one and just clean the sort of tracks on the inside of this action to make sure we have any sort of excess dirt and stuff out of there. It allows me to get into these sort of weird spaces because now I can literally just go in like that spin around, get all the icky bits that are in there and I can immediately see how much work it's doing 
because it's getting all of the other stuff that I want out of there because obviously we want this sort of back to new. These you can also reuse every now and again. Let me show you that. Again, this is easiest. <laughs> I'm gonna have a quick little brush down the chamber here. Just make sure everything's good to go down there. Little blow for good luck. And that's it done. Again, we're gonna wipe our optic down. Just there was so much dust every single place on this rifle. Okay, this back lens is in a state, so we have to be very careful there. When I brush, sometimes you will see on the little edges, especially on the front where the sunshade can screw into, there's like these little places where a little bit of sand and stuff can actually come to rest. Try and blow as much of that out as you can before you actually start mechanically or with the brush trying to, you know, remove any of that debris that's in there because you can scratch an optic and it's never good when you scratch an optic. Okay, so now that we've cleaned this sort of surface dust and stuff, I'm gonna use a special brush that I only use for cleaning optics. And I'm gonna give this a nice little wipe, gently give it a blow, nice little wipe, gently and do the same thing on the other side. This side is in really bad shape. You do not wanna use a brush that's ever been exposed to any chemicals or stuff like that when doing this. Okay, we're gonna pop that guy off to the side and then we're actually gonna get our lens pen and do this properly. Now with our lens pen brush, we can actually manipulate the stiffness of this brush and just gently brush the surface until it's nice and clean as you got it the day out of its box. And going from the middle to the outside in little circles is a technique that always works really well for me. This is a little bit of one of those times where you know, some patience goes a long way. If you wanted to speed this up in your optic boxes, you do get supplied with a little rag from Vortex or wherever. At least I don't know if the others do that, but I'm sure they will. Very important, try and use that only for optics. I do have so many of them that I've always got a drawer full of them there. Um, but just taking your time here every now and again will help you enjoy your optics more because even if it doesn't look visually dirty, if you look at it into the light, all of a sudden sometimes you can go like, wow, my optic's really dirty. So just like every now and again, have a look at cleaning your lenses on your optic. Then you might find your optic better than you thought it was due to the fact that your lens is super, super dirty. I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with this. As I said, this does take a little bit of time, but taking your time here will ensure that you enjoy your kit to the best of its ability and the best that it can perform and you know, in a sport of marginal gains, this might just be that time when was it a hit on the left or on the right of the plate and you can make that adjustment and put the next round on target versus kind of seeing it and then missing your follow-up shot. Now, next up, we're gonna oil some surfaces, give it a few minutes to penetrate the metal. We're gonna wipe it all off. Why do I do those kind of things? Because this can turn into a GIF <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> so, we are gonna lube everything up. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna apply some oils and things to this, give it a few minutes to penetrate the metal, and then we're gonna come back, wipe everything down. But while this is penetrating into the metal, whether that penetrates or not, it always makes me feel good. I've said penetrate a lot, given the previous outtake that we've just had, but be that as it may, that's what we're gonna be doing next. Now, I like to use this stuff. This is called fluid foam. It is freaking awesome. I'll try find a link for the guys. I know in South Africa we can buy this at sort of the famous big box store. We don't stock this, but this stuff is amazing for like anti-rust. It is a magnet for dirt, so we wanna apply this, let it do its thing, and then wipe off any excess. So we're gonna spray some of this stuff onto a rag. Just be careful, it does tend to sort of bubble over a little bit. This is what it actually looks like. It is really amazing how well it treats rust, something that has rust already, or something that's about to rust. Even if you have a little bit of surface rust, like that little bit of surface rust we had down here, simply just wiping over it cleared that away. I'm gonna wipe my action and everything with this stuff. And this little rag I'm gonna just use to go through sort of all the parts and let that penetrate into the metal a little bit. And then we're gonna apply like different oils to different parts of the firearm. But this is gonna just give us that little coating that next time we shoot in the rain, you don't open up your rifle bag after the next morning because you've come home late <sighs> that evening, a little bit of sand in there still. And then you have rust everywhere over your rifle. So this stuff has really been a good investment. It is expensive to buy, fair warning. 
I don't know what it cost. I've had it literally for years. So if you think about that, I had that since I started shooting in 2016. And that bottle is pretty damn full still. So it's, I would say it's at least three quarters full because a little bit goes a long way when it comes to lube. So now with that same rag, I'm just gonna apply some of this stuff to our bolt. Also get any potential thing that's left behind over here. Get in all the little bits and pieces, rub the handle, everything. As I said, we are gonna wipe this down just now before we put that back into our rifle. Something I'm also gonna do, and this is, there's very little of this stuff left. I'm just gonna give my trigger the slightest rub down. It's very important here, we do not want any oil on this so we're just going to let this penetrate and we're going to take a clean rag and wipe any potential excess off of that guy so let's put that down there now let's have a look at how this bolt feels let's get this in here now we're obviously expecting this to be pretty freaking amazing and as i expected i mean this is as smooth as it's going to get but effectively this is one of the best actions in the world and Something that actually prompted me making this video is I uploaded a video after the match of the state of this rifle on Facebook and I think it got 400,000 views in like a couple of days and people couldn't believe that the rifle ran in such conditions because the bad actions in the past have been mostly known as bench rest actions so super tight everything and that sort of stigma has stuck that you can't shoot them when it's dusty or the conditions aren't optimal like at a you know, manicured shooting range. That is horse manure, okay? I've shot this in horrendous conditions, in the pouring rain, in crazy dust storms, and it's functioned all the time. Now, this is the TR, the tactical repeater. I've also got the HR behind me. I've got the Bumblebee. In fact, I've got about six, seven bad actions. Hard to keep track of which one I've shot in the worst conditions, but every single one of them has performed flawlessly. So I'm gonna leave this and come back in about 15 to 20 minutes, just let this sit, do some other work, and we'll pick this up just now and wipe off all the lube and then I'll show you guys where I like to just put the smallest amount of thick viscosity oil on this bolt and that is actually one of the only bits of oil that I'm gonna leave on this firearm before we assemble the whole thing. I actually have pretty vivid memories as a child going into my father's office when he was cleaning his rifles and <laughs> it's amazing how life works like that, you know. Um, I was like, oh, that's so cool. You know, one day I want to do the same. And uh, here we are. Maybe one day our kids will grow up working on their firearms and remembering where they were, what it smelled like, everything. Because this stuff does have quite a peculiar smell. It's not necessarily a nice smell. But uh, I always find it funny how smells and sounds and things bring us back to certain sections of our lives. So our bolt is now ready to go. So. So the same company also makes sort of a little eyedrop version of this fluid film stuff. I'm gonna take four drops of this. I'm gonna put one drop a little bit over there. I'll show you guys a close up of this too over there. And if you look at your bolt, if you've cycled it enough times, you can actually start seeing where it wears. I'm just gonna put these like little dabs on there. You do not want anything on the front of your recoil lugs. That is bad. So a little bit dab there, dab there, and then I'm gonna put a tiny little bit in this cocking mechanism on the back here, and then that is pretty much good to go. I'm gonna take my finger, lightly spread this stuff around on the bolt, very so lightly. I mean, we're talking half a drops here on some of these places, so very, very little indeed. I'm gonna put that in there, okay. Just lube everything that needs to be lubed. I'm gonna pop it back into my barreled action, cycle it a few times, Okay, just let everything lube up that we want lube. And then I'm gonna take off my bolt again and then wipe away any excess lube. And that is how I prepare my bolt action after it gets super dirty, dusty. Do you don't even hear it coming out? It's so smooth, it's ridiculous. Uh, let's pop that over there, don't move it off. So now I'm gonna just wipe this down, put everything back together. I hope you guys have found this valuable. If you have found this valuable, we've got other videos about long range shooting where you can also learn stuff and increase your craft. Now guys, remember, if you take care of your stuff, your stuff will take care of you when it counts. So take the little bit of time, make sure your stuff is in quality condition every time you go out there, because I guarantee you, you will have better results as a result of that. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.